Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you the cards that I've created for my mom and my grandma for Mother's Day coming up this weekend. I've done coordinating cards, but a little bit of a different theme for each. So to begin with the cards, I have two A2 size folded cards. They're side folded. And then a piece of mixed media card stock that's cut to the same size as the A2 cards. I'm cutting out some circle templates from my Nina Solar White cardstock, and this will be the stamping area. And I just have these general circle templates I picked up at Michael's near where they sell their Sizzix machines. And I'm going to use the Mum and Me stamp set from Lawn Fawn for my stamping. For the background, I'm going to use Distress Inks in Spun Sugar, Tattered Rose, Picked Raspberry, Cracked Pistachio, Tumbled Glass, and Mermaid Lagoon. So we'll use the first three um, Distress Inks for this background, a pink tone. So I'm going to begin with Spun Sugar, and this is going to be at the top of my background. So I'm using my ink blending tool, and I'm very gently coming in from the edge, rubbing in circles. It's easiest to blend if you do small circles. And just bringing that down about a third into the page background. I want to put a little bit over that third just so I can blend it with my next color, which is Tattered Rose. So this will go in the middle and sort of overlap the top and bottom colors as well. These are two light colors, but they look really nicely blended together. The Tattered Rose is more of a yellow warm tone and then the Spun Sugar is more of a pink. And then to top it off, I'm going to come in with Picked Raspberry, which is a nice saturated rich pink color. And it'll be a nice grounding element in the visual background. And this one's easy to lay down. The darker pigments are, are much easier to apply for sure. So I have this all blended and it's looking really good. I'll set it aside to dry while I work on the next card. So for this one, I'm gonna start with Cracked Pistachio at the top. And this is one of my favorite colors. I use this color quite a lot and I just think it's so pretty. And so I will apply the same rules for this, doing a third of the card in this color and blending it out a little bit past the third so that it can bleed into the next color. And that's the way that you get the easy transition between the two colors, is just to overlap them ever so slightly. So I'll come in with tumbled glass in the middle here and I will put it in the middle and overlap it a bit. Now my tumbled glass is a little dry and so I just took the ink pad and, and rubbed it right on the paper and I was able to blend it. I made sure I was really quick when I did this so it didn't dry in place with lines or anything. But I did have to rub the ink pad directly on this work surface, which was a little unnerving, but it actually worked out. I'll definitely have to get a re-inker for that one. And then coming in with Mermaid Lagoon. So this is kind of the same idea with the Picked Raspberry where it's a super saturated color and it creates a nice grounding element in the visual background. It's a stronger color and heavier visually. So I will put that at the bottom. So again, I'm coming in with tumbled glass and putting it right on the surface and blending it out. It blended out really nice. So I'll let these two dry. Usually take about 10 minutes or so, or you can run them under a heat tool. I'm gonna come in with my biggest circle template. And so I'm gonna cut out um, a shape here and then create a frame and then an inner set size. So I'm using the two sizes next to each other, the largest and then the next size smaller than that. And so I've run this through my Sizzix die cutting machine. And so I'm popping out that center piece. I have a frame here and I'll save that for another project because I only want to keep the outside and the inside of those circles. And to run these through my machine, I use post-it tape and it's a low adhesion tape, so it comes off real easy and it doesn't make a mark on your, art, on your artwork, so it's really nice. So I'll just prepare the next um, pass through my Sizzix machine with this one. And so now that this is ready, I'm gonna assemble the background here. I'm using my tape roller and I'm going to line the edges of this background as much as I can. It's a little thin at the edges of the circle where it hits near the outside border so I won't be able to put tape quite there. I mean if I was really concerned about it I could come in with maybe some white glue or something but I can get awfully close so I think it'll be okay on its own. So I'm going to line this up very carefully. When you're lining up your card background to your base you always want to make sure that you match the folded edge because you can't trim that side but if you had overhang on any of the other sides it's easy to trim up 
and make even. So now coming in with the center circle, I am going to use my tape ruler for that as well. And then I use my X-Acto knife just to find position and make sure that my gradients line up too in the background so that they're not offset. That's a, that was a little tricky to see, but I think I was able to get it okay. So here I'm lining up the card and the base on the folded edge. And then for any overhang, I can trim that with my paper trimmer. And so I have that all stuck in place and then I'll just put my circle background down as well. You could also apply this with foam tape and with that negative, that negative circle rim that's cut out, um, that would create even more of a 3D effect. Just something to add a little interest and dimension to the background. So now I'm ready to stamp and I have my two circles cut out with my Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm going to use the owl and the fox, and they each have little babies that they're hugging. And so my grandma loves owls. She, they're her favorite animal, so I definitely had to use the owls for her. And then the fox is a smart fox, and that definitely describes my mom. So um, I thought these stamps worked out perfect for both of them. And as I was editing this video, I actually remembered that my mom watches all my videos, so she's probably watching this one before Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day, Mom, and <laughs> I'm sorry your card's probably not a surprise, but I guess it is if you watch the video. And uh, yeah, so um, my mom and my grandma are pretty special. They're pretty amazing people and a big influence in my life, so I was really happy to make these cards and and I enjoy making handmade cards because it does show that you've put thought into it and um, it's always something special to receive um, opposed to a store made card. I mean, those are great too, but sometimes it's just nice to receive something that's crafted from hand because you know someone has put time and thought into it and made considerations on your behalf. So I'm stamping this with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, and I use that a lot when I'm Copic coloring. I love that um, color. That ink pad's nice to clean up. It doesn't stick to my stamps. So I'm just coming in with my Copic colors here, and I will list all of the Copic colors in the description below if you're interested in what they are, and I'll include links to those too if you're looking for any specific colors. A lot of these browns here I picked up actually in this Copic Skin Tone set, and you can buy that as a package, and I think it comes with six uh, progressive skin tones from light to dark, and then you get R20 as well, which is like a blush tone. Um, so that kit was really handy for me to pick up, and I use these colors quite a lot, not just as skin tones, but throughout different colorings. And so with my fox, I wanted to make my fox red, um, but I wanted to make it match my base too, keep the same color palette, so I'm using that pink E04 um, as my base color and then coming in with E07 which is a, a more of a rich red color but a warm color um, just to create the shadows. So my fox is sort of pink but reads as red because it has that darker red color just as an accent. So I'm doing little wispy lines too for my fox. I just um, instead of just doing gradiated shadows I found it gave a little bit of visual texture to the coloring and sometimes I like doing the hair and that sort of thing. So it worked out well for this stamp. And then for my baby fox, I'm coming in with just a lighter brown. I wanted to keep the baby animals a little bit lighter of a tone than from the mummy animals who would be grown up and have a bit of a darker coat. And so coming in on the owls as well, I'm doing um, mostly the skin tones with them, the brown E's, the earth tones. And then I'll come in on the, the mummy owl and make her a little bit darker. And I will do some texture with her too. I, with the fox, I did the wispy lines. And with the owl, I'll do little um, flicks of the brush, kind of like little C's or U's, um, to create sort of the owl feathers, I guess, that they would have to give a little bit of visual texture that way. I guess it reminds me of when you're in school and you create a picture of a bird and you make the little hooks or the little U's on their wings to emulate the feathers. So just sort of that idea. 
and I usually apply that with my shadow color and so you can see it but it doesn't stand out too strong it still blends into that base color really well and so I have some accents here with the owls I'm going to color their beaks and their little claws in yellow tones and then with the fox I did the ear the inner ear with pink and so for the base color, just to ground them to the scene, I'm using a color that complements the background. So I've used a greenish blue tone for the owl, which is going on a blue card, and also has green tones. The cracked pistachio brings in that green um, from the background. And then for the fox too, I'm using R20 here, and that marries that pink tone into the background as well. So for my stamped area, I'm going to apply that with foam tape just to give it some elevation and a little bit of three dimension. Foam tape's my favorite. I am running low on foam tape though, so I cut it into these pieces. Um, normally I would rim the outside of the card or around the edge with foam tape, but I had to stretch it. So I think this worked okay too. So using my X-Acto knife just to keep my hands out of the way so I can place it into the center. And I have that all ready to go. And then doing the same with my mom's card with the box and placing it into the center of the background as well. So I've pushed that into place and I'm just going to add some sequin embellishments. I picked these up at the dollar store. And working in odd numbers, I'm sure you've heard that before. That seems to be a pretty common theme. It is something you learn in graphic design. Um, you want to use odd numbers for objects or elements to create more interest. So I have two at the top and three at the bottom. And so leading in from the top left to the bottom right, this also creates eye direction so that you're starting at the top of the card and your eye travels through the middle where the artwork is and then down to the bottom where you lead into opening the card. And so here is the finished result. I'm super happy with how these turned out. I think they're so cute and I'm really excited to give them to my mom and my grandma, even though my mom's probably already seen them now. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos. Thank you so much for watching.